Is Light versus Postgres, what one should you really choose for your next project? Most people choose the wrong database and that can be a frustrating experience. So make sure you watch to the end to figure out what is the right one for you. Here we'll go through what is the main difference? What happens to the N plus one problem with SQLite? Backup secrets to save your butt? The limitations of SQLite and really cool things you can do with SQLite. And at last, we'll figure out what one is the perfect one for you. Let's get into it. So the first is the Postgres is actually a server that you connect to using a client. So it's a server client relationship. Yes, that means setting up a server and keeping it running. It can be running on the same server, but usually you want to maybe separate it for two different servers. With data traveling forwards and backwards between the server and client, there is always an overhead of that, even through, for many cases, it's negligible. But it do add latency. And as I always say, in 2024, latency is kind of performance. High latency means that your website will load slower. On the other hand, SQLite is just a file and there's no server involvement. This makes it much easier to manage and run. Imagine if your database is just a file. Well, that's SQLite in a nutshell. No middleman, no drama, just you and your data. That's great, but it also makes simultaneous writes harder. So if you need a lot of writes, such as 100 or 1000 per second, you would probably be better off with Postgres than SQLite. And if you need to connect from different services as well, it might also be better with Postgres as well, because SQLite is just a file, so you can't connect to it from a different server that easily. Then there's the famous N plus one problem, which is very common when you are connecting using uh, ORM, also known as an object relational mapper. ORMs often call the database in a very inefficient way, leading to performance bottlenecks. SQLite is basically just a library and thus removing the need for server-based communication. And that actually often eliminates the N plus one problem. I know that's surprising, but the N plus one problem doesn't really exist that much in SQLite world. Yes, you get a little slowdown, but it's not that much comparable because the communication overhead when you're just calling a library is that much smaller compared to when you're calling something over Ethernet or even into process communication. Number three, backward simplicity. When it comes to backups, SQLite is a champ. Want to backup? Just call this small little command here and it will basically back up everything for you. And after this, you can very easily move it to local host and start investigating in case there's some problems on production. Postgres SQL, on the other hand, is very different beast when it comes to backup. Since Postgres is running on its own server or its own process, that means that you need to make sure you connect to it properly before you can make a backup. That means you need to connect to it using the host name, port, database name, and the correct database. And if any of these variables are wrong, you won't get a backup. I tried that and my client was not happy. It was not a fun New Year's Eve. That's why I love SQLite. Simplicity in everything. Number four, traffic management. So when does SQLite reach its limit? Well, it's primarily when you have a lot of heavy write because the heavy write doesn't really work that well when it's just a library and it's just one file. If your application requires thousands of writes per second, you probably want to do Postgres or maybe even MySQL. The same if you need to connect from different services where you don't have just one file, but you have many different servers and you need to be able to connect to one database and just have that as the source of truth. But for most projects, you wouldn't really need to have anything else than SQLite. And SQLite typically performed extremely well with low latency, like we're talking 100 times lower latency than Postgres SQL. So these are things where you can really get a lot of free performance and make your website a lot faster as long as it's within the realm of what SQLite can handle. There are some really cool things you get with SQLite databases that you can get with Postgres or MySQL that easily. The first thing is data separation for clients. As SQLite is just a database file, you can very easily make sure you have multiple or maybe even one for each user. This way you keep their data completely separate. SQLite have actually been forked into LibSQL by Torso and I don't know the specifics, but that is supposed to make this even better. So how do I use Postgres versus SQLite? Here's my approach. 
At first, just start with SQL Lite. It's lightweight, it's easy, it just works. And for most of the cases, this is everything I need. Even when I build bigger projects, I use SQL Lite rigorously. Like my most beloved project called v2backer.com, it's the best alternative to Loom since it doesn't require any sign up and you can start immediately for free. Check it out and tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. In other words, SQL Lite is like my favorite meat stew. It always tastes nice. But sometimes you need to spice it up and have a little bit of a different thing. And that's when I will decide to use something else like Postgres. I almost never go for MySQL or some document database, NoSQL solution. No, usually you don't really need that, but just keeping it simple. SQL Lite most of the way, when you can't, then you start upgrading. I even made a video called SQL Lite is enough, where I go in depth of why SQL Lite is enough for actually most websites out there. It's in the description. And if we're so lucky that Costa, my editor can put it up somewhere here, it will also be there. Silver bullets only exist in the mind of governmental drones. SQL Lite offers simplicity, low overhead, and it just in general works. But for high traffic websites or when you need simultaneous writes or reads, you might want to consider something else like Postgres. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get more information about database management and what to use here. And that's it for this time. Tell me in the comment section below, what database do you use and for what reason? That's it for now. Cheers.